academics and everything last night, and uh, we'll start up today. Uh, we got a little work in last week on um, Thursday uh, on, on Florida. Um, you know, I think they're playing their best football. I think they have a really, really good roster. Um, a lot of players we've recruited <clears throat> and recruited against them. Um, but they're playing their best football and obviously a, a, a talented group, really a lot of great size across the front on the offensive and defensive lines. I think Billy knows that's where the key is in the SEC in terms of uh, length and size. They play a lot of players uh, on defense. They've had a lot of guys play up front. Um, but, you know, the three losses have come to three teams that are ranked in the top ten. At least I think they are. I don't even know. But they're, they're really good teams. Um, and they played those teams – um, well, so a lot of respect for Billy. He and I have worked together before. Uh, I think he's building a really good program down there. Um, and he is a tremendous football coach. And uh, he does not leave any box unchecked, I can assure you of that, and know a lot of their staff. So should be a great game in Jacksonville. It looks like it's going to be great weather. Uh, it's always a really tough, hard-fought game. I think it will be um, one of the most physical games we play all year. Yeah, Coach, have you seen uh, Florida's offense evolve at all with Lagway now as the starting quarterback and full-time guy? And, and where have you seen him grow throughout the year as a, as a true freshman? <clears throat> First off, he's a tremendous talent. You know, his arm talent and arm strength itself is elite. He has great size. He can make all the throws. He's got a couple, you know, really wow, wow throws. I think for his age and experience, he's uh, ahead of his time in terms of his pocket. Uh, movement management. He, he, you know, a lot of a lot of freshmen abort the pocket and run out of it. He, he does a good job stepping up through it, and um, he's made several plays where he trusted the pocket and steps up and, and makes really good throws. Threw the deep ball really well. Uh, obviously, last game against Kentucky. Um, you know, it's not so much the change. Um, obviously, he has a running ability, but Graham was a good athlete too. So, it's not a huge change between the two in terms of what they ask him to do. I think he's uh, capable of making explosives, and you know they got the extra element in the quarterback run when they need it. You know they don't they don't do it a ton, but when they need it, he can do it, and he's large. I mean, he's big. He's hard to tackle. Hey, coach, uh, over here. Uh, <clears throat> have y'all heard any word back from the SEC regarding any appeal as far as Dan Jackson and Joe Milgaro go for the first half of the game? Is yeah, I'm not really focused on that today. I mean, I'm not really worried about it. I mean. It, it is what it is right now. Our guys are trying to get ready for Florida, and we're going to prepare um, to play Florida. Yeah, Kirby, Jaden Ball, freshman running back for Florida, had a, a really impressive game against Kentucky. What, what did you sort of see from him in that game and, and what he brings to the table? Yeah, I've known Jaden a long time. He's a, he's a tremendous talent, a great athlete. Saw him his ninth grade year uh, here in our 7-on-7 seven -seven camp, and what a great athlete he was uh, then. He was playing safety and, and knew he would grow into something. He was a big kid then, but he's gotten so much better. He's explosive. He's twitchy. Um, Hard to tackle. I mean, runs runs physical, um, and had had a great he had a great year. But he had a great game against uh, Kentucky with the opportunities he got. Coach, obviously Carson going back home again is, is, is the last time down there. Uh, I find myself answering a lot that people say, "What's wrong with Carson back?" How, how do you answer that question going into this week, if anything? Yeah, I don't I don't answer it because I don't think anything's wrong with him. I mean, he, he hasn't played perfect, but nobody does. So I'm, I'm very comfortable with, with where Carson is and <clears throat> in terms of his leadership, his practice habits, the things we're asking him to do. I think he's doing a good job of those. I was going to ask about Carson. Also, he had said after the Texas game that, that he has to play uh, better. What areas uh, do you guys want to see improvement from him? Well, I think he's going to own that regardless. You know, if you ask a kid that, they're going to say that he does need to play better. We need to coach better. Uh, we need to execute better. We need the people around him to play better. Um, but that's that's the ownership that a quarterback takes. And I don't, I don't, you know, I wouldn't expect him to answer any questions like that any other way. Coach, uh, looking at Florida, you said they're playing their best ball right now. Where have you seen their biggest growth since early in the season? Well, I think they're executing at a higher level. Um, they're making explosives, which those number one indicators to win and loss. Um, turning it over a little less. Uh, they've been, you know, they, they played a really clean game against uh, uh, Tennessee at Tennessee, which we all know is a really hard place to play. And um, they've got more and more guys. I mean, some of their portal guys have stepped up and made more plays. So, uh, 
you know, very impressed with, with how they're playing, playing more confidence to me on, on defense and really flying around. Yeah, Kirby, the senior class could be the first group since the 80s to go 4-0 and against Florida with a win on Saturday. Just as a guy who's familiar with this rivalry, what is the significance of that? And do you think that's any, I guess, extra motivating factor for those guys going into Saturday? No, I think it has no bearing on Saturday. I mean, each season is independent of the previous. Um, we don't get caught up in things like that. We're, we're, we're trying to earn it each day. Kirby, what was the rivalry in the smart household growing up, and did that change for you as a player and as a head coach? Uh, I don't understand what you mean. The rivalry in the smart household, the one I grew up in or the yeah. one I'm in now? What you grew up in? Your dad was he Yeah, it was Bainbridge Cairo. <laughs> I mean, there was no – I didn't know anything about college games. I didn't know they existed. I didn't – not until I was about a 10th grader did I worry about um, college. You know, I was worried about – making sure we had food on the table and we won the games we were supposed to win uh, at the high school level. And then now that you're here, the, in terms of the, all the great rivalries you have, where does this one kind of stack up? They're all dead even. They're all at the very top. Coach, of course, a big story, you know, story in this. I know it's a big story about but, but Trevor's going back to face his former team. What has historically kind of been your message to guys that you've coached when going against their former team? How do you want them to kind of keep their head in games like this? Yeah, focus on the task. Not, not. It's not a chance. You don't want to get caught up in emotions and be emotional. I don't think that helps any. You know, Dom's gone through it with uh, Missouri a couple times, and you know, different players. That's that's part of college football now. You know, it's we, we we've had kids go down there, so we, we don't we don't get caught up in it much. I mean, at the end of the day, what's going to make you play well? It ain't worrying about that. How close is uh, Tate Rowledge to being able to play for you guys this week? Uh, we're hopeful. I mean, we think he's going to be able to, to, to give us uh, give us something. He he worked some last week, uh, took some reps, um, did rehab over the weekend. Um, you know, hopefully he's he's rip, rip raring to go. I mean, I know he wants to play in this game. It's really important to him. Yeah, with Trevor, what what has sort of allowed him to make sort of the transition where he's able to help you guys and play such a key role for you guys on offense right away in his first season after transferring in? Well, he's talented you know he's intelligent um he's a level-headed kid um he's a good leader he's a great kid so i mean i think those qualities help anybody play but he's he's older than a freshman he came into a, a system that's you know not that far off from the one he was in in terms of offense it may be different words but a lot of the same plays so i think he uh he he, he transitioned well kirby uh the data shows that there's been a lot more close games in conference play this year than in past years. Is is there anything that jumps out to you as reason why? Is it an NIL portal effect? You know, our defense is getting better at stopping offenses or what? Yeah, I, I don't have a great explanation for that. Um, I think there's more talent in our league than ever before in terms of accumulation of talent, whether it's from lower divisions, uh, other teams. I mean, every team we play, they give me a sheet of the portals, and it seems to be more and more uh, players from, from other conferences or even our conference that, that left and went to the, the, you know a team within our, our, our conference that we play, and, and the teams are better. I mean, it's just – and uh, I don't know that teams have as much depth. I know we don't. We don't have as much depth as we've had in the past. So, so that depth is shared out, which may create some more parity there. Um, I don't know the exact reason for it. There, there is definitely not a large uh, margin of separation top to bottom in our league, probably the least it's ever been since since I've been in it. Kirby, what do you feel like you guys got accomplished during this bye week? Yeah, I think we got to look at ourselves. I think we got a lot of work for our, our, our younger players. Uh, I think we did uh, – a lot of uh, targeted drill work, targeted uh, things that we needed to work on specifically, uh, offensively and defensively, situational football um, that we really hadn't got to do in the past couple of weeks because it's been so fast. Coach, you had Coach Rick in here a few weeks ago. You were at his event last week. Uh, how would you describe your relationship, how it's grown over these past few years? 
Yeah, uh, I initially got to know Coach Rick when he hired me, you know, and worked a year on his staff and uh, have known him for a long time, he and Catherine and their family and son John, who, you know, is a quarterback coach and does a great job over at uh, Prince. So they have a tremendous family. He's a tremendous man. The support he's shown for this community and uh, what he's done for so many others. I mean, there's so many lettermen that come back that played for him that, you know, it's important that we embrace them because I'm a letterman. You know, I've come back here for years, and I want those guys that, that played for him to feel comfortable. They can come back home, and him being here helps that. Coach, can you give us uh, your thoughts on the development of Sam and Pemba, Damon Wilson, and Gabe Harris? They came in with a lot of fanfare. We're starting to see their names called more and more. Can you give us your thoughts? Yeah, all three of those guys are, are – uh, they're similar in the fact they play the same position. They're different in their makeup and their um, – kind of their strengths. Um, each one has gotten better. I think Chidero's done a great job developing those guys. We've seen Damon increase his role um, this year from last year, and he's continuing to get better. Um, and, and Gabe has given us a, a, a solid guy in some positions that we've struggled in. We've had some injuries at the position that Gabe's been asked to play. And uh, Sam's continuing to, to develop. He probably had the furthest to go from a standpoint of he'd been an offensive player some of his high school career and was really just starting to play uh, more and more on defense. But I'm pleased with all three of those guys. Coach, two points <clears throat> for you. One, you mentioned the Mississippi State uh, game warm-ups, I think. And you've said before the, the pregame at, at uh, the neutral site isn't quite the same. As a, as a home field, one, do you, is there anything you change up or anything you can do to, to get a, a better pregame? And two, if you could address the, just Michael Williams and the, the impact and what, what he's allowed you to do with him back in the lineup more full strength. Uh, well, Michael's still not full. full. I mean, he, he wasn't last week in terms of full strength and all the way back. I want to be clear on that. I mean, I think people look at the, the output against Texas and think he didn't play a lot of snaps um, and he didn't uh, – play probably the 100% role that he was playing against Clemson. We think he's going to be much better this week. Um, we did a lot of rehab with him last week, but you know, I don't know where he is. What, what does he allow us to do? He gives us depth. He gives, makes everybody else better around him. Um, he's certainly a, a hard player to block, and he plays the run and pass well. So I'm happy to have him back. I just hope he is 100%. <coughs> now, I don't understand the other question. He says about Mississippi State. Well, you, you mentioned the, the pregame. Stadium with the 50 50, you don't sense the same uh, intensity in the warm ups that you maybe get at a home game. Yeah, it's different. It's different vibe. Uh, it's no relation to, to home or, or away. It's just a different, you know, it's a different vibe because it's a, it's a different fan base a little bit. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's not a home field for anybody. It's, it's a more of an NFL type feel to it because a lot of people don't come in until uh, kickoff. But um, that's just more about managing it. It's not a, Complaint. I mean, it's just a fact. Kirby, you had a lot of uh, national kind of spotlight games. Is it hard when you have a schedule like you do to keep your team, uh, you know, peak performance week after week? Um, you know, when the schedule rolls around. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know that we we have peaked. I hope we haven't. Um, I, I think you're you're constantly trying to get better, and that's our pursuit of of the best version of ourselves. And I, we haven't reached that with this team. We haven't reached our best. We're, we're trying to get better and ascend in every area and grow and create more depth. Um, we've got opportunities to do that this week and weeks coming forward. But uh, I'm, I'm not here to complain about the schedule. Coach, we're going to talk to Arian Smith and Chaz Chambliss. Can you talk about guys who, you know, there are times they weren't playing, but they've developed, they stuck around. Can you talk about their journeys and their development, what you think of them? Yeah, I think it makes them who they are. They both overcome a lot of adversity. In Arian's case, it's been injuries. Um, he's had lots of injuries in his career. He's worked really hard uh, to create a role for himself, whether it's special teams, uh, playing wide out. He's he's just a hard worker. He comes to work every day and, and does it the right way. Chaz is the same way. He embodies this program. He's tough. He's physical. Guys will tell you around the team he's, he's not afraid of contact. He seeks it. And uh, he's, he's led better this year than he ever has in terms of, of demanding, you know, excellence from the guys around him. And <clears throat> I don't think he was comfortable doing that uh, prior to this year, but I've seen it uh, come out more and more with him. To follow up on Arian, he's y'all's leading receiver right now. Just what does he bring to this offense and, and the element that he brings to it? 
Well, I think he brings consistency in terms of he's been in the offense. He understands it. Um, he has vertical speed. He's got. He's become a much better route runner in his last couple of years, and he's he's worked hard to develop at that and grow at that. And uh, just really happy for him and pleased for him to to keep working. Time for one more question. If anyone has one. Okay, coach. Thank you. Thank y'all.